Hi everyone. Um, you might have recently seen another video that I made, or the first video I made, where I created this pot stand for my Espit cooker. Um, and in that video I mentioned that I was going to try and make um, a windshield for it. Um, and that's that's what I've done. So I thought I'd show you the progress of the uh, pimping of my Espit cooker. So at the moment I've got it just covered with one of these strong wristbands that you can buy, these charity wristbands. They're really great for um, holding things together. So if you ever get free ones, you should really keep them. And uh, you can use them for keeping all your gear nice and secure. So don't throw them away. Uh, snap them up when you see them at flea markets and things. So, as you know, I've got my pot stand made from a protection grill for a computer fan. I'm actually resting uh, the Espit cooker at the moment on a sheet, a small sheet of um, thin aluminium that I managed to buy from an art store for three euros. And here you can see are my windshields that I've made and a little tray to put the Espit tablet in. Um, so let's get it set up and I'll show you what I did. So just open up as usual. Now, you know, lots of um, owners of Espit cookers um, will do the thing where they angle the uh, the sides in so they can balance a cup on, but I really do like the idea of having um, a stable, solid, flat surface like this rather than an angled one. Um, which is the reason why I've kind of pimped it like this. Um, made this little tray, it was a little bit of leftover tin afterwards, and I've done it in such a way that I can just literally just fold that in very, very slightly. Um, if I want to store it flat, it's really pliable and flexible. And I could obviously sit that down in the middle there, put my Espit tablet in, if I want to just save it from getting too mucky on the bottom. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I'm not overly worried about Espit residue getting on there but it sits nicely down there um, what I did was I cut out and fashioned uh, some pieces of this uh, very thin aluminium foil that's not foil so aluminium sheet um, I made sure that I took um, a, a small file and when I finished cutting it I could literally cut it with a pair of really strong old scissors that I have so cutting it was not a problem at all I rounded off these edges, I cut the little corners off first and uh, smoothed it down and rubbed it with the the file. So there's no sharp edges on this because you know you could snag a corner on it and, and nick yourself on it but uh, it was very very easy to make it and it sits and slides very snugly and neatly on the back there. Same for this side here, just slot it in. I chose to slot it in this way, just hanging it on there. Um, and of course I made sure, I didn't really have to adjust uh, these in any way. They fit on really nice and snugly and still snaps on really well to the extent I could, you know, I might jiggle the piece out in the middle. But you can turn it upside down, it doesn't shift or anything. So you could have it set up like that, nice little wind protection. Um, help the Espit uh, cube or the Sports Direct cheaper cubes that I've got um, burn a bit more efficiently. Um, set the Tatonka cup on, put the lid on, and it sits there all nice and snugly in there. Very nice and stable. Um, I've just been using that cup because I've also created something else because I saw a really cool video um, on YouTube that a guy had uh, done to again supplement the and use the frame of the Espit cooker and I'll show you now what I did so we'll just take this off a moment of course if I want to use this as a little mini hobo stove I can take one side off take that out I might even put a little bit of tin foil in the bottom or possibly just leave it as it is if I put an Espit tablet in there um, and then I feel that I need to have a little bit more fuel I can always put little sticks of wood I think I actually kept here the last outing that I went on. Pieces of fat wood and things like that. Just shove it in there to burn. So I've kept a stock of little, small, dry old pieces of wood. Um, but what I have also made um, to go in there is this. So, you know, I could obviously pop that back on there and continue to use it like a, a hobo cooker and poke sticks and things through there. That works really well. But... And I shall put the wind 
shield back on it so I can show you the effect of this little demonstration. I saw this guy and what he'd made for his cooker, um, a very small shallow tin that I've got here, is this is like a little alcohol burner and inside here is what's called fire rope. Um, in German, because I live here in Austria, it's called Feuerfester Glaskordel. Um, it's or Dichtung, which is like a kind of um, a word for seal or um, what's the word I'm looking for that goes around that? Yeah, like an O-ring kind of seal uh, for uh, ovens, uh, wood stoves, ovens where they have the glass screen on the front. And quite often you need this fire resistant cord that goes around the glass to create a tight seal. Um, and this is what I bought. Luckily I went Harvey's with my partner. So uh, this is called Bertram's brand foyer festa glass cordial and of course this is really super heat resistant fireproof glass cordage for stove and oven doors and in this pack you can see I've got two meters I've got 10 millimeter diameter and two meters of it there's about one meter and 20 uh, centimeters still left so I, I only used I made one for myself and for my partner uh, about 20 centimeters of cordage uh, is all I needed to pack into here. You literally, it's not stuck in, it's just rolled round and round and round and round nice and tightly and sits in there. Um, I will be doing a, a better field test. I've tested it already with um, alcohol. You can just put alcohol in the middle of it, soak it in a little bit and wow, I, I really only used a tiny amount, um, probably less than an ounce of alcohol and it really did burn really super well um, enough to certainly heat up my Tatonka uh, cup for a cup full of water uh, and I've just literally tested it now with some alcohol gel um, it probably filled an area about that big of gel um, and it burnt for ooh, about eight minutes and again easily warmed up or heated up a, a cup of water good enough for a hot drink not to a rolling boil, I still haven't quite worked out the right amount of uh, alcohol, either alcohol liquid or gel to use to get a rolling boil on a cup. But that's what I'll test when I do it out in the field. Um, and I literally just popped it inside the uh, cooker here, the SBIT cooker, to use it as a platform, solid, stable. It had the wind protection here. Put the grill back on it. Um, didn't have any problems with starving it of um, airflow. There was, I did it out on my balcony where there was lots of air going, blowing through. You've got air going under here, it's coming up the sides. But you could always, if you really had a problem, just lift off one of these windshields. And that burnt really, really well. You can also just sit an SBIT tablet on top of that as well, um, which I might test out on my, my next field test when I go out. Put the SBIT tablet on top of that and see if that makes any difference. Um, so I'm going to be doing some tests. I really want to try this as a, as a mini hobo wood come espit uh, top up, you know, top it up, the espit tablet up with some twigs of wood. If I need it to get a rolling ball, I'm going to test it with this little um, alcohol burner inside now. Literally just made from fire cord, fire resistant cord, packed in. Neat little tin here, quite shallow. Didn't want it to be too big. And th there's enough of a lip, you know, if you wanted to soak that in alcohol, um, I wouldn't use that much because it really didn't need it. And I would only ever use this cooker, this and my SBIT, to really boil water to make a hot drink or to heat up soup or, or to make noodles and things like that. Um, it's just as a backup emergency little cooker. So I'm really, really pleased with how that's turning out now. Pimping up my SBIT stove, my mini SBIT um, cooker. There we go. That's a nice little setup there. And I hope you enjoyed seeing that and found it interesting. So, oh, I didn't tell you the price. Uh, this Bertram's from, I bought it from a shop called OB, which is like a, a Home Depot type store here in Austria. Um, it cost about eight euros, I think. Um, so... And there's loads left. I could easily make a bigger one out of a, a larger Altoids tin um, or a tobacco-style tin to make more of these little cookers if I wanted to. 
Um, so pretty good value for money, a neat, handy little surface for burning on. So yeah, I hope you found that interesting. That's my uh, little mod today. So um, catch up soon. Next time I'm going to do a, a field test out in the open in uh, normal conditions to test these little burners. Okay, cheerio. Bye for now.